While we light up jack-o'-lanterns in the fall, did you know that your pumpkins could be used to generate their own light? I'm Tiffany and in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a set of pumpkins into a battery and we'll learn about the chemistry behind it. For this experiment, you'll need four or more pumpkins. You could also use lemons, potatoes, or try this with other fruits and vegetables. Electrical wire. You could also use electric leads with alligator clips on the end. Zinc and copper. You'll need one of each for however many fruits and vegetables you have. You can use zinc nails such as those labeled zinc galvanized or zinc plated. For copper, you can use copper pennies or use copper wire that's gauge 18 or thicker. You'll also need a 3 volt LED. I'm using a spare bulb from some dollar store Christmas lights, but these can also be ordered online. Optionally, you or an adult helper may want to use a hammer, wire cutters, wire strippers, and a multimeter, which is a device that can help us read the voltage. This experiment may be challenging for young scientists, so please make sure that you have an adult supervisor available to assist you. To begin, in each of your pumpkins, insert a piece of copper and zinc. The pumpkin shell may be tough to pierce, so you can use a hammer to lightly tap the nails in and to make a hole for your copper wire. Leave enough of the metal sticking out of the pumpkin and make sure that the metals aren't touching each other inside the pumpkin. Next, take your electrical wires and connect the copper from one pumpkin to the zinc of another pumpkin. Repeat this with each pumpkin until all the pumpkins are connected in a row. At one end of the row, you should have an unconnected copper piece and at the opposite end, you should have an unconnected zinc piece. If your electrical wire has a coating, you will need to use a wire stripper on the ends to reveal the wire before you connect them to your metal. You can use your multimeter to test the voltage generated with each connected pumpkin. With one pumpkin, I'm getting around 0.475 volts. With two pumpkins, I'm getting around 0.9 volts at the highest. And now, for the moment we've been waiting for, we're going to connect the free copper piece to one leg of the LED and connect the free zinc to the other leg. You may want to do this in a darker area so it's easier to see the light. If you have an LED that has different leg lengths, connect the zinc to the shorter leg, which is the negative end, also known as the cathode. If you can't tell which is the cathode and your LED isn't lighting up, Try reversing the connection or check using a multimeter that you're generating around 3 volts of electricity. If you want to get even more power, you can connect more fruits and vegetables. I've connected an apple and a small tomato here. Now that we've generated electricity, let's learn the science behind it. Here is a diagram of our setup. Copper and zinc, which are called the electrodes, are both metals which can form two plus ions, meaning that the atoms can give up two electrons and become positively charged. The pumpkin juice also contains dissolved salt and hydrogen ions, making it an electrolyte, which is a medium containing dissolved ions that can help conduct electricity. The pumpkin juice reacts with the two metals. In the zinc, the reaction results in a zinc atom giving up two electrons, this reaction where electrons are lost is what is known as an oxidation reaction. The zinc 2 plus ion floats into the electrolyte while the two electrons remain in the metal. When we connect the zinc metal to the copper metal, those two free electrons from the zinc flow through this external wire into the copper. At the surface of the copper, two hydrogen ions from the pumpkin juice will gain those two electrons to form a hydrogen molecule. This gaining of electrons is known as a reduction reaction. Electrons flow from the zinc to the copper because copper is the more electronegative metal, meaning it is more willing to accept electrons than zinc. The zinc metal where the electrons come from is referred to as the anode, which is denoted by a minus sign. The copper metal that accepts electrons is the cathode, represented by a plus sign. This flow of electrons between the two metals is electricity. When we connect an LED, the electrons flow through the LED while on its way to the copper, giving the LED electricity to light up. The reason we need multiple pumpkins is because a single pumpkin doesn't generate enough volts for a 3 volt LED. Volt is a unit used to describe the difference in electrical potential between two points. In simple terms, it is the strength of the force that pushes the electrons through a circuit. 
voltage is additive when we connect the pumpkins in a row. And so adding more pumpkins gives us enough voltage to power the LED. If we connected two 1.5 volt batteries end to end, that would give us 3 volts, which would also allow us to power the LED. As you may be able to guess, this electrochemistry is very important for developing the different kinds of batteries that we use today. From powering our laptops and phones to the battery and a car, each of these batteries consists of a cathode, anode, and electrolyte. The type of metals and materials used for each will differ, but they all involve an oxidation and reduction reaction that generates a flow of electrons. In summary, we learned that 1. All batteries consist of a cathode, anode, and electrolyte. 2. Anodes, such as those made of zinc, supply the electrons which flow through to the cathodes, such as copper, and create electricity. 3. The electrolytes, such as the dissolved salts and hydrogen ions in the pumpkin juice, help facilitate these reactions. Thanks for watching. Give this experiment a go, tag Pueblo Science with your results, and make sure to share this video with a friend. If you want more awesome science, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. What should we cover next? Comment below and remember to stay curious.